Welcome to Health Diary. My name is Winnie Lubembe and we're coming to you from Dusit Princess Hotel and Residences right here in Nairobi. So today our focus of conversation is on adenoids and we'll touch a little bit on tonsils because most of the time we hear a lot of parents who would say my child has tonsils, my child has tonsillitis or maybe it could be enlarged adenoids which is pretty much common and especially children below the age of five. So what exactly is enlarged adenoid all about and what are some of the treatment options and the complications that come with the same well we find out after this fact of the matter adenoids just like tonsils are part of the immune system which helps to prevent and fight infections in the body they grow until a child is between ages three and five and begin to shrink after around age seven Tonsils and adenoids can become enlarged for many different reasons, including exposure to viruses, bacteria, fungal or parasitic infections. Several treatment options are available, including surgery. All right, well, let's get to understand more about tonsils or tonsillitis, because we hear a lot about tonsillitis and adenoid. And to help us with that conversation today, we have Dr. Cyrus Gakuo. Uh, Karuga, who is an ENT and head and neck surgeon. I'm <laughs> being titled. Good to have you, Dr. Thank you so much for your time. And we also have Caroline Mwende, aka Mama Sky, in this <laughs> in this case today, because we're talking about uh, your daughter, Sky, who's five and a half. All right. Okay. Uh, and of course, we'll get to, to, we'll get to understand more than about um, Sky and uh, what happened. But Dr. very simply, right? I don't know. It's, because we usually talk about tonsils, tonsillitis, oh, ni mefura apa, <laughs> all the time. Can we just get to understand what we mean by adenoid? So tonsils, um, I think most of us know them. If you open your mouth, you'll see some two swellings on the either side of the mouth and the back. So those are what are called uh, pharyngeal tonsils. Now we have other tissues similar to that, which are the back of the nose. And uh, actually it's a single tissue in the midline, which is known as the adenoid. Most people don't know about the adenoid, though they know about the tonsil. The function is similar in terms of how they work. They're supposed to filter um, pathogens and be able to develop some form of immunity, especially in the earlier days of uh, formation. Okay. In childhood. All right. So then that means it's prone to either infection conditions here and there, given what they do. That is both the adenoid and uh, the tonsils, right? So what are some of this... Um, conditions that it can get they are actually like the first line of defense for the body yeah so the filtering particles are coming from the environment directly okay. and um, therefore they can actually get infected quite often and most of the times the infection is viral okay so and that's most of the time those we call common cold or flu so there are different types of viruses that can cause infection okay. there are in fact very many types of viruses that can cause infection um Sometimes these viral infections can now make you prone to having a bacterial infection yeah. because the viruses affect the function and the immunity yeah. of those tissues and yeah. now allows the bacteria to take advantage and come in. Okay. All right. But let's talk about um, Sky's uh, case. Uh, so recurrent flu, which I think is very common for kids, right? But I think the biggest um, difference here is when maybe it does not stop. Um, but so for Sky, when did this begin? So for Sky, we ca uh, but when she joined school, that was around three, she started getting infections, which of course we, we know it's because they, they're all in school, they're all in doing all this playing and all that stuff. They get a lot of news, the mild ones. But now with time, she started getting, in between three and four, she started getting now um, fevers and it's when we saw the pediatrician, we discovered that she was getting tonsillitis. So she started getting antibiotics every other day, antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Then between four and five years, it worsened. Okay. So every month or so, she would get sick. And she know when you look at it, like, this is very sick, where it's um, asexual. She's getting a lot of fevers. She goes through school. Then you got a new symptom. She started getting ear uh, pain. And then with the time now, she was already in um, PP1, mm. pre-primary uh, pre one. She was starting to get um, issues with hearing in class. She could actually say, I can't hear the teacher. Or when you talk to her, you notice 
she's not hearing. And initially I thought she was just being cheeky or naughty. I mean, she's, she's a small girl, yeah. a toddler basically. So, but then when it became recurrent and the teacher also noted that mm -hmm. I think she's not hearing me, I knew there was a, there's a bigger, there's a problem. bigger problem. Yeah. So we moved now from the pediatrician mm -hmm. to the ENT yeah. surgeon. Okay. Yes. Now for review. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very easy, like you're saying, to ignore, right? And say, oh, they come back with clues here and there. It should go away. Um, again, it should clear. Uh, within a few days True. but then the fact that it's not clearing um and then you're having this recurrence infections so and then after a while you know the duration starts getting longer mm -hmm. so what exactly does that say and what is the distinction that you know what this could be a serious case that you know the parents or caregivers should be aware of first of all of course um for example when a child goes to school for the first time mm -hmm. you know that a child's immunity is not very well developed so it is not surprising that they may get recurrent viral infections. Mm. However, if these infections are coming with now high fevers and then are bringing other complications, one of them being either obstruction, so maybe the child is unable to breathe well at night, they're sleeping uh, with their mouth open or they're struggling to breathe, sometimes they wake up to breathe. Yeah. That is a sign that something else is happening. Um, if the child is also getting ear complications like ear pain or ear infections, it means that Whatever is happening is also affecting the ears. Okay. So the adenoids where they're situated actually will affect both because um, they're in the airway. So naturally human beings are supposed to breathe through the nose. But now when the adenoid enlarges, it obstructs the passage for breathing. And that leads to now obstruction and snoring. Where it's also sitting is next to the station tube opening, which is the tube that connects the nose and the ear. And again, it can cause obstruction and now lead to ear complications. Yeah. Okay. So, again, how common do we see this? Because I know for a lot of parents would say, yeah, flu, uh, tonsillitis, and then that's it. But how common do we see cases of enlarged um, adenoids, in, and especially in children? And then we brought you also to comment on what is the most, um, what's the term, age group that is mostly affected by enlarged um, adenoids? So, adenoid disease is actually a disease that affects children between the age of two and six. However, um, in terms of ear infections, it is said that almost every single child will have had at least one or two mm. ear infections by the time they're six years old. Okay. So it's a very common thing. Most of the times you actually don't even notice it. Um, the problem comes when it persists and you have fluid in the ear for a long time. Okay. So that will now develop, I mean, cause other complications. For example, the child is not able to hear well and therefore can start affecting even the development of speech. Yeah, so in terms of how common it is, it's extremely common, but most of the times we do miss it. Um, so for children who have adenoid hypertrophy, um, one is that they'll start having uh, difficulty breathing and, snor and having uh, snoring, yeah. and then they can also develop now the ear complications. Yeah. Do the symptoms worsen maybe with time? Because again, like I said, it's very easy for a parent to ignore. So do they then worsen after, if it's not attended to as soon as possible? Usually it's not a problem if the duration is short. For example, if you have a, because most children get a viral infection, mm -hmm. the adenoids do enlarge when you have a viral infection. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time, they go back to normal. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, especially children who have allergy or children who have recurrent infection, mm -hmm. then the adenoid keeps enlarging mm -hmm. instead of uh, regressing back to its normal size. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you have now persistent symptoms. Uh, Eli as well. No, so she didn't have any speech problems just the hearing problems. And as uh, as Dr. Karuga said, she also had a snoring at night. That was actually one of the problems that she had. And then, of course, no, this means she's sick most of the time. So she's not happy. She's not playing around with her uh, brother or her friends. And then every other time she's also on antibiotics. So she would always complain, mommy, why am I always getting sick? Mm. Why am I the only one who's always uh, taking medication? My brother is fine. So like she would always compare herself with the other um, children and wonder like why am I the one also missing school? The rest of the guys are going to school. Like why me? She kept uh, actually for her it was a big issue. Why me? All right. And are there other factors that either could predispose a child um, to enlarged adenoids? And do we also have like structural, you know, problems that could cause enlarged adenoids that not necessarily an environmental factor? Most, actually, the commonest cause of enlarged adenoids is allergy. Okay. So allergy is usually the baseline. Mm -hmm. 
So children who have allergy have recurrent inflammation of the adenoids, and that can lead to enlargement. Um, for other children, it's recurrent infections, especially if for one reason or another they have uh, impaired immunity. Um, another common thing is environmental pollutants. So you talk about smoke, whether it's uh, fumes or cigarette smoke or other kinds of smoke. So that can cause uh, inflammation of the adenoids as well. Mm. Okay. Um, and again, we need to go on a break in the next maybe like a minute or so, which I know is not enough for you to answer <laughs> the next question in terms of, um, so all these recurrent infections, she's on antibiotics almost all the time. I mean, gets to a point where she's just the current infections, she's on antibiotics almost all the time. I mean, gets to a point where she's just the I'm tired. Let's get, you know, to understand really what exactly is going on and, and find a lasting solution. Um, so did you try at some point, like, so many parents would do just go to the you know to the chemist nearby, get <laughs> antibiotics and give it to the child. Did you try to you know seek other ways to to sort this out um, before going to yeah? Well, at least uh, for me, I've always worked with the pediatrician. Okay, and especially now because things were always um, you know the infections kept recurring. So initially, it was just the home remedies. You know, you just give a paracetamol for the fever. And then you just uh, give like an anti-inflammatory, like pyritone, something like that. Yeah. But now when it comes now to the antibiotics, I was very strict. I was like, uh, let's just get the pediatrician mm -hmm. to prescribe because after a day or two, I'm just saying she's not getting well on the paracetamol. Yeah. I'm like, ah, 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 let's get her. So I never got yeah. to the point of like, I'm just buying. It always had to be prescribed. Yeah. Yes. And especially because it got to a point um, the basic antibiotic we were using was not working. Mm -hmm. So it kept, we kept getting stronger yeah. and stronger antibiotics. So, of course, that is way beyond. You know, way, yeah. That's true. So it it exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we kept, get, we kept getting stronger antibiotics. And even when we went to the, uh, to the ENT surgeon, mm -hmm. we still got um, a different type of stronger antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, of course, way out of my league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I see that. I yeah. see that. And it's a good thing that you yeah. did not try and self medicate. Uh, <laughs> as a parent, yeah. but again, the child also want to comment to the same the risk uh, that comes with just giving the baby medication, whatever is available at home, trying to to help them. But then you make the situation worse. Um, and again, talk about the diagnosis as well. Uh, but all that is coming up after the break. Stay with us. From Benfica to Atletico Madrid to Chelsea to Barcelona, Joao Felix has not lacked opportunities at big clubs. Indeed, his raw talent and potential has generated those opportunities without always making the most of them. Quite clearly, now is the time for Joao Felix to make those opportunities count. We are calling you to be part and parcel of the fastest growing satellite town in this city. We are developing and building a beautiful Achievers Gate. This is a chance that you cannot afford to miss. Call this number 0790 300 300. All right, welcome back. The show is Health Diary, and today we have a specific conversation on children, and we are focusing on uh, enlarged adenoids and tonsils um, as well. And to help us with that conversation, we have Dr. Cyrus Gakuo Karuda, who is an ENT and head and next surgeon <laughs> to help us with that conversation today, as well as Caroline Mwende, aka Mama Sky, uh, just giving us Sky's experience as far as adenoids um, are concerned. So, Dr. Chari, very quickly before we talk about um, diagnosis, there's that aspect of 
tonsillitis and uh, adenoids, right? Just in case someone missed all the first part, just to do like a differentiation um, between the two, or is it one and the same time? They're actually separate entities. Okay. The, the tonsils are at the back of the mouth, whereas, okay, that's the um, um, pharyngeal tonsils. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the other tissues which are similar to the tonsils at the back of the nose. All right. Those are known as the adenoid. Okay. So they're separate entities, but most of the times, whatever is one is one thing is happening to one, it also affects the other one. Okay. So especially like for example, allergy, it will affect both infections. When you have tonsillitis, you're most likely having also adenoiditis, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Okay. Yes. All right. Um. So again, before we went on a break, Mumaska was telling us to go to a point where there's some things you could not do. But one of the things that most parents would do is try and give the medication that is already in the house. Like we're trying to deal with the fever, whatever medication is there, drop a team total. But yet, we're, we're not too sure what we are treating. So is there a risk with that? Yes, there's always a risk with uh, home, okay, self-medication. And that is because, first of all, we may not be treating the right thing. So we don't know whether um, the medicine we're using is the right medicine for the condition that we are having. And the second thing is, some of the medicines can actually be harmful to the child uh, or the adult. So I think it's important that we seek proper medical advice so that we can be able to treat the right thing mm. with the right medicine. Yeah. Very quickly, do adults also get embarrassed adenoids? For adults, because the space at the back of the nose is much bigger, um, even if the adenoids enlarge, it doesn't cause much of a problem. So this is mostly a condition that affects children in terms of adenoids. But tonsils, um, both adults and children get recurrent tonsillitis. Okay. All right. Um, so Mama Sky, again, so Sky is uncomfortable at this point. Uh, she's asking a lot of questions. Uh, and of course, you'll be concerned uh, as a parent. Try to deal with the fever, but not, you know, on, on the on the antibiotics um, part. So do you see like any reaction aside from it not working, the kind of antibiotics that you are on? Was it, what other reaction probably did you experience before deciding to just, you know, take Sky to, to a specialist? to have this sorted once and for all? Uh, for me, the other big issue was now, um, the, because of the snoring at night, she wasn't sleeping well. Yeah. So you find um, during the day, she's still tired. She has to still wake up and go to school and get to school and concentrate and learn. So now she's tired and then she's not hearing at school. So of course, at, at a point, I could see that uh, her learning was being affected. She's a bright kid. Okay, I know every parent says the child is bright, but she's a bright girl. She's a bright girl. So you, I could pick up that. She's not moving at her normal pace. And that, for me, I was like, for sure, um, this is affecting her beyond just the typical normal flu that they get in school. Yeah, and of course, um, the other issue was appetite, uh, like, Every other day she was on strong antibiotics, which sh her appetite really went down. So eating was also an issue for her. And even the fact that she's always tired and you're telling her to eat, she's just, oh, like it was, it was a big deal. Like feeding became an issue in the house. And now we're getting better at eating. But before, oh, wow. Yeah. It was no. war. It was literal war. She yeah. didn't want to eat at all. Yeah. This yeah. was like lot of weight like uh, yeah she was just she was just it was like a plateau she was never gaining like yeah. you'd expect now with age but she was just flat there mm -hmm. and of course now what would make her happy was just you know she just wants to snack yeah but she didn't want to eat yeah. like you just bring normal food she's like no bite you and dish there's not of course she's yeah. very happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right um so that then does it make it difficult to diagnose because like I said, the symptoms are more or less the same as, you know, um, like normal flu and, and, and whatnot. So do you see patients come in when it's almost too late? Uh, and is it difficult to diagnose? Well, one thing is that people ignore a lot uh, some of the symptoms, especially snoring. Mm -hmm. You know, many people will say that the father snores or the mother snores, <laughs> saying, it's so it's normal. Side. Yeah, <laughs> but snoring yeah. is generally not normal. Especially if you're snoring consistently or persistently, okay. that is not a normal thing. So if a child is snoring or an adult is snoring, then they need to be actually assessed because it is not normal for someone to snore. At all? At all. Because snoring, okay, daily. Yeah. 
because um, snoring means that there's an obstruction. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so once a child is snoring and snoring for many days mm -hmm. and does not have any infection, mm -hmm. then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And that is because the space for breathing has been narrowed. Okay. And therefore now uh, it's producing this, uh, the sound for snoring. Yeah. So is that one of the ways that you used to then diagnose and say this could be enlarged? I don't know. It's just compared to something else. Yes, actually, the diagnosis for enlarged adenoids is mostly clinical. Okay. So, which means that from the history that we've been told by the parent yeah. and from the examination that we do, we can be able to make a diagnosis okay. without even any other investigation. Mm -hmm. But if um, an investigation is necessary, there are a couple of things we can do. Yeah. Um, we can either do a rigid endoscopy, which means, okay, <laughs> as a yeah. name of one I'm using, yeah. just putting a camera inside the nose. Yeah. To be able to it see, it sounds very back uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, yeah, it is uncomfortable. So for children, it's a bit difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to do it on an adult. Yeah. The other one you can be able to do is an X-ray. So an X-ray that shows the back of the nose, and then you can be able to see the size of the adenoids okay. from the shadow. All right. Yeah. Okay. So in Sky's case, um, what happened? What What do you do to come up with that appropriate diagnosis uh, that she has uh, enlarged adenoids? Do you want to take us through what happened? Because of you, you were there yeah. to see everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I, yeah. yeah, so we had a consultation and uh, there was a clinical exam. Uh, um, first of all, we had the questions. We were asked questions mm -hmm. just as I described how she was going through uh, that period of her must like almost two years. Mm -hmm. And then now um, we had uh, now the camera done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she was pretty excited. So. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, they had all these nice gadgets, and she was oh, like, wow. "Oh wow, oh, wow. I want." <laughs> this is new. Yeah. She yeah. Was, and then they have the camera to show you like light. What exactly is happening, happening in there? She yeah. was curious to know what's going on in my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she was shown. She was like, "This." So we got to see now the the uh, through the nose and also through the ears. Mm -hmm. We could actually even see the fluid clearly, mm -hmm. and we're showing yeah, this is actually the problem. And it was explained mm -hmm. nicely, mm -hmm. and it made sense that this is why. Um, even despite taking all these antibiotics, she wasn't getting better because the fluid was always there. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't get to do any imaging because um, Doc said this is adequate enough. Mm. The diagnosis was clear. Yeah. Yeah. So and then, we understood. Yeah. And she also understood. They were actually, um, what I really liked was the ex uh, Doc explained to her mm. what exactly was going on because yeah. she's very inquisitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when he explained it, and she was like, okay, I know. Okay. Yeah. And like you said, the complications can be very severe and, and, and even more long term. So yeah, what is it that you would say? And then for the treatment, so is it covered by insurance? Is it an out of pocket um, expense? And what would you tell the people who are watching us today as far as enlarged adenoids are concerned? So I think um, the advice I would give is that if your child is snoring, don't ignore it. Yeah. Uh, especially if the child is snoring for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, be observant. If you see different um, t uh, things that are happening that were not there before, yeah. um, a child's body just uh, seek medical attention because some of these things may be very subtle, mm -hmm. but um, with time can cause more major complications. Yeah, uh, for example, if the child is not hearing, don't ignore it because it could be something else. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we have uh, mm -hmm. um, the child chat. Yeah. So in terms of um, treatment, the treatment, cost. Yes. Yeah. Um, the insurances have been paying for the uh, okay. procedures for uh, adenoidectomy. It's called adenoidectomy. That's the procedure of removing the adenoid. All right. The procedure of removing the tonsils is known as tonsillectomy. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they have been paying for those. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, it is part of the uh, disease spectrum that affects children. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I hope they, they don't stop paying for it for sure. Yeah. Um, so um can i talk about the, how the surgery is done? Sure, yes. or, yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah so the surgery is done under anesthesia mm -hmm. so meaning that it's done when the child is asleep and it's done through the mouth so there are no scars on the face mm -hmm. so the adenoids are removed through the mouth and also the tonsils from the mouth yeah in a case where we have fluid in the ears mm -hmm. which needs to be drained mm -hmm. sometimes we put a tiny little tube on the eardrum mm -hmm. which the child cannot feel yeah and but that will help uh, uh, fluid to drain out of the ear mm -hmm. and air to enter. So the movement of the eardrum mm -hmm. remains normal and mm -hmm. the child can hear okay. Yeah. So this tube comes out on its own after some time. So okay. it's not something that has to be moved later. Okay. And then the, the prognosis? The outcome is actually usually very good. good. Okay. So like for example, once you put the tubes, mm -hmm. the child can hear from when they wake up from the operation. Mm -hmm. 
they can immediately hear normally. Okay. And for the breathing again, mm-hmm. in a day or two after the swelling is gone, they can breathe perfectly. Mm-hmm. In fact, many parents are like, I have to keep waking up to check whether the child is still there because yeah. the breathing is now silent. Yeah. Okay. I, I wonder if you... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did that. It was actually, yeah. As he said, yeah, you went from very loud, you know, breathing and snoring to yeah. silence, yeah. and you're like, oh wow, this is like immediate response. Yeah, yeah, that's something that you almost yeah. look forward to. All right, thank you so much, uh, Caroline Wendeke, a Mama Sky, for sharing uh, Sky's journey and story as far as uh, adenoids, and that is enlarged adenoid, and uh, Dr. Cyrus Gaku Karuga as well, who's an ENT and head ethnic surgeon, giving us all the info we need today as far as understanding enlarged adenoids and uh, tussles are concerned. So, time now for you to take a look at this health tip. So, today I have two breakfast options. And this site here, it's a breakfast option for a person who is working out or a person who uses a lot of energy during the day. So, here with me, I have a bowl of hot milk. A porridge, uh, I have a fruit salsa, and I have a samosa. And why oatmeal? It's because it has a lot of fiber, and this helps with digestion, and this gives you a lot of energy. So it also helps in constipation, and also it uh, slows uh, the production of uh, glucose and sugars in your system. And goes well with an, a cup of uh, hibiscus tea. That's an herbal tea. And this, uh, on this side, I have a, a lighter meal for breakfast for a person who's sitting in the office, which work is not too much. And my breakfast today for this person is a fish fingers and some vegetable, raw vegetables. And this, the fish fingers will give you protein, it gives you energy during the day because you're not using a lot of energy, and this will keep you full throughout the day. And also this, you can uh, take along with an habuti, which is my hibiscus tea. Well, that marks the end of our conversation today as far as enlarged adenoids are concerned. And the takeaway message is, and especially for the parents and caregivers, do not ignore your child. Listen to your child, but most importantly, listen to your doctor because enlarged adenoids could have severe complications if not dealt with as soon as possible. So I hope that you have learned so much from today's conversation. Bax, if you have any other question, our social media handles are down at the bottom of your screen. My name is Winnie Lubembe. A special thanks to Dusit Princess Hotel and Residences right here in Nairobi for hosting us today. Until next time, adios.